Good afternoon and welcome to yet another edition of Yes 101's Visual Radio for the News First team. I'm Dithmini De Silva. News First Headline Russia to halt recruitment of Sri Lankan citizens into Russian armed forces. Bandula says future governments must comply with IMF loan agreements. In news overseas, UN Security Council backs US-Israel Gaza ceasefire plan. And from the T20 Cricket World Cup, Canada determined to make the best out of their encounter against Pakistan. The news in detail. Sri Lankan Foreign Minister Ali Sabri, who is currently in Russia to participate in the BRICS 2024 foreign ministerial session with developing countries, had a bilateral meeting with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov yesterday. Minister Sabri, during the meeting, brought to the attention of his Russian counterpart the issue of Sri Lankan citizens who have joined the Russian armed forces and sought his assistance in resolving the issues encountered by them. Minister Sabri, in this regard, said it was agreed that the forthcoming meeting that is scheduled on the 26th to the 27th of June between the Sri Lankan high-level delegation led by State Minister of Foreign Affairs, Tharaka Balasuri, and the Deputy Minister of Defence of the Russian Federation, will review these issues in detail and take suitable action to resolve the situation. At the request of Minister Ali Sabri, it was also agreed that no further recruitment from Sri Lanka will be done. During the meeting, the two foreign ministers agreed to further enhance bilateral ties, including the spheres of tourism, higher education and economic cooperation. In other local news, Minister Bandulu Gunawardana stressed on the necessity of adhering to the loan agreements with the International Monetary Fund until 2028 while formulating the budget for the upcoming year, 2025, regardless of the governing administration. He, was, he also highlighted the obligation for parties aspiring to assume state power to disclose their compliance with these arrangements to the country. Several political parties have initiated protests and strikes. Consequently, a committee comprising the Secretary to the President and the Secretary of the Minister of Finance has been established to address issues concerning salaries, including discrepancies across government departments, corporations and statutory bodies. The Cabinet has also made a decision to propose solutions and incorporate them into the 2025 budget document, said the Minister, as quoted by the President's Media Division. He went on to note that despite the government's various needs, the 2024 budget cannot accommodate additional financial allocations and it is essential to note that over the past four decades there has not been sufficient income to cover day-to-day -day operational expenses of the government. International News the United Nations Security Council has voted to support a U.S. proposed Israel-Gaza ceasefire plan. The proposal sets out conditions for a full and complete ceasefire, the release of hostages held by Hamas, the return of dead hostages remains and the exchange of Palestinian prisoners. Now, 14 of the 15 Security Council members voted in favor of the U.S. drafted resolution. However, Russia abstained. The resolution states that Israel has accepted the ceasefire proposal and urges Hamas to agree to it too. Sports News Having overcome Ireland by 12 runs to register their maiden win in the ICC Men's T20 World Cup, Canada is prepared for a tough challenge ahead when they take on Pakistan at the Nassau County International Cricket Stadium today. In the pre-match conference, Canadian batsman Aaron Johnson shared the significance of the win, saying, quote, It's a historic win. It's our first T20 win against a test-playing nation. And this just shows that Canada has a lot to offer to the world of cricket, unquote. In today's encounter, loss for Pakistan would eliminate them from the tournament, having already dropped points to the USA and India in their opening two games. Canada will take on Pakistan at 8 p.m. Sri Lanka time. You can catch all the live action of the ICC Men's T20 World Cup on TV1 and www.sirasatv.lk. And with that, we wrap up this edition of Yes 101's Visual Radio. For the News First Team, I'm Dithmini De Silva. Thank you.